Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again, where thanks to the mighty fine people who support me on Patreon, people like Fraser Wielden and Chris Hewson, I am talking about gold. Finger. Uh, no, uh, just gold. Uh, no, not that either, just plain, simple, one word, gold. Where are all these singers coming from? God, no more singers, please, please, please. We're just gonna be talking about gold. Yes, Gold, the British thriller from 1974 starring Roger Moore as a man out to thwart some villain's dastardly plot to flood a gold mine in order to manipulate the international gold market. So it's kind of like if Ulrich Goldfinger and Max Zorin came together and were all like, hey, you like gold, I like flooding mines and killing miners, let's do business. Okay, before I get into talking about the film itself, I have to get the Bond connections out of the way because there are a ton of them. Obviously, Roger Moore stars in the film and this was the first non-Bond film he made since becoming Bond and it was released the same year that The Man with the Golden Gun came out, but then the film is directed by Peter Hunt, of course, the director of Honor Majesty's Secret Service and editor of the preceding Bond films to that, and this was only his second feature-length directorial effort. Future Bond director John Glenn worked on the film, as did production designer Sid Kane. The film features three songs with lyrics by Don Black, Alec Mills was a camera operator, the credits read like they belong on a Bond film, and in fact the credits were actually made by the guy who makes the credits for the Bond films, Maurice Binder. By the way, just while we're on the opening credits, I love how for like literally over a minute they have in giant letters on the screen the word gold and yet they still feel like they have to follow up the leading cast members names with in gold like I don't think that extra clarity was entirely necessary I mean after staring at the word gold for so long did anyone have any question that they'd entered the wrong movie theater <laughs> What the hell? I thought I was seeing Zardoz! Oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, excuse me, sorry, terribly sorry, I'm in the wrong theatre, sorry, excuse me. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into the plot too much, uh, particularly concerning the ending, as I hope that more people see this film and make their own minds up about it, quite frankly, but I'm gonna be giving a bit of a mixed review, really, but I will say that for whatever I'm gonna say after this, I absolutely adored the opening 15 minutes or so of this thing. After a slightly tonally out-of-place bombastic opening song, we go straight into a tunnel collapsing at a gold mine outside Johannesburg, men are trapped, and it's up to Roger Moore's Rodney Slater to get down there and see folk and when I say down I mean down down Oh. One of the absolute best things about this film is that for a good chunk of the mine scenes, they're, they're filmed in real mines. Like, they genuinely packed up a lift with camera equipment and Roger Moore and sent it down a couple of miles into the earth to film this thing. And you can really tell, like, obviously there are some studio shots, but the authenticity of the actual location is so there, and it creates a fantastic feeling of helpless claustrophobia in so many of the scenes set down there. And it leads to some fantastically inventive shots like this one, which is when Roger is first going down into the mine towards the start of the film and the camera is looking up out of the top of the lift and it just holds and holds and holds and the light becomes so distant and the darkness just engulfs the whole frame. In fact, I, I love the lighting in general in these mine sequences too. So much is done through torches and, and again, it just feels so authentic. Maybe it's just that the Blu-ray transfer I was watching was really great, but the contrast is fantastic too. I mean, the image has a lot of natural filmic grain to it, which really helps it feel so like gritty and harsh. These guys are sweating and heaving these heavy rubber rocks around and I feel it's watching it. Like, I think it's a real great bit of filmmaking. Um, I mean, what can I say? Peter Hunt, ladies and gentlemen. We're also getting a good deal of character stuff while all of the action is going on here too, and I think it's a really great low-key heroic introduction for Roger Moore's character, and tension is immediately set up between the racist Kowalski and the mine worker Big King, who's played wonderfully by Simon Sabella. Obviously, this is a movie made in the 1970s in South Africa under the apartheid regime, so it's inevitable that those racial tensions would factor into the story somewhere. I'd honestly love to have seen this opening sequence in the cinema. I think it's so terrific and a really great hook into the 
film, and you kind of need to hold on to that because we're not going to get close to this kind of excitement again for another good hour of screen time. Not that I'm expecting the film to be a non-stop subterranean action thrill ride, but a good chunk of it becomes, well, just kind of soap opery, really? But before I get into talking about that, the main plot of the film is that Roger Moore's character is unknowingly entangled in a web of criminality as a group of white-collar criminals plan to flood a mine and ultimately raise the price of gold on world markets and make a killing in stocks and shares and the like. John Gilgood is the leader of this criminal organization, and I do love this actor. He's just so campy and does so well to just ham things up in this very refined way. And there are plenty of scenes with him and like the other blokes who are all in on his scheme, but really a lot of what they end up talking about is just very plotty and exposition-y, and you could just ultimately take out all of their dialogue and just replace it with money repeatedly, and it'd be pretty much the same vibe. Money, uh, money, uh, money, uh, money. Money, 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 money. But a good bulk of the running time is spent with Roger Moore romancing Susanna York's character Terry Steiner, but she's married to Bradford Dillman's Manfred Steiner, and Ray Milland appears occasionally to be a crotchety old git, and this is all interspersed with the occasional reminder from John Gielgud that money, 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 money. And that's about over an hour of the overall running time, and I'm not going to go into the climax in detail for this review, but the last half hour chunk of the film is very minor based and matches a good deal of the excitement of the opening, so it's well worth sticking with for that. But if you're anything like me, you may well have found a lot of the middle of the film to be a bit of a drag. Of course, Roger is great in this. I mean, he's great in most everything I've ever seen him in, and for the most part, he's playing a character very unlike his Bond persona. In fact, he's a bit of a rebel bad boy. First mining job at Blyvort, two charges of assault, then you joined us. Bad record at first, taking unnecessary risks. But since you've been underground manager, your record has been exemplary. I must have matured. And for the most part, I think the naturally affable and charming Moore manages to pull off the tougher side of the character pretty well, particularly when he's down in the mine itself. I just have a hard time buying him as much of a gruff fellow when he's around the ladies like this. Ladies, what are you drinking? Oh, drinks are on me. Champagne, please. Yes, sir. He just kind of defaults to his usual genial, good-natured self, and it's certainly in these moments that you kind of see him as his version of the James Bond character, but for the most, I felt that his Rodney Slater was a very different persona to the one we've become accustomed to in his 007 films. The rest of the cast are really great, too. I've seen Ray Milland, Susanna York, and John Gilgood in plenty of other things, and they are incredibly solid, ever-dependable performers, no matter what what project they find themselves in, I always think they deliver the goods. My issues with the film are certainly more with the writing than anything else. This film is based on a book by Wilbur Smith, and it's co-adapted for the screen by Wilbur Smith, and any time that you have an author involved in the screen adaptation of their own work, you can make a good bet that there are going to be pacing issues and a plot tangent too many, and maybe one or two unnecessary characters, and yeah, that pretty much sums up the middle hour of gold. It's a two hour long film, and there are so many scenes that I feel could just be tightened up better, and I feel like there is about 15 minutes of this thing in the middle that could be cut out, but uh, I mean, I think Pete Hunt's direction is really strong regardless, and I'm, you know, I'm really thankful that I had the opportunity to see more of his work. Really interestingly, in an interview with Tony Klinger, the son of the producer Michael Klinger, Tony talks about how they were first gunning for Steven Spielberg to direct the film, and it was actually Roger Moore who vetoed the idea when he found out that Spielberg was still in his 20s at the time. And you know what, yeah, Moore was in his 40s, so it makes sense that he'd maybe have second thoughts about a complete newbie coming in and taking on the project, and Peter Hunter directed an episode of The Persuaders at this point, so he was probably more of a safe bet from that perspective. Obviously Spielberg wasn't seriously caught for the film, it was really more of a case of, hey, what do you think? Maybe this guy? Well, I, uh, no. But it's a curious idea that maybe there's some alternate universe out there where Steven Spielberg made gold with Roger Moore instead of Jaws with Universal Pictures. And as much as I like gold, it's certainly no Jaws. But hey, I had a really great time with it nonetheless. It's an incredibly fun and exciting film when it's trying to be, and some of those mind sequences are just absolutely terrific. I wish that the character drama and the love triangle was more compelling, and I wish that the bad guy's schemes were a bit more concise in places. And there's a really silly sequence towards the end of the film involving a, involving a couple of the bad guys 
guys, that I won't spoil here, but it was supposed to be this really dramatic moment, and I just kind of sniggered through it. And it's a shame, because much of the climax involving Roger Moore's character, I found really engaging. If you're a fan of Roger Moore and 70s thrillers, I think you'll have a good enough time with this. There are moments of real greatness present throughout the whole thing. It's just a bit of a shame about that overall laggy middle part. Thanks again to all of the Patreon supporters who voted in the relevant poll for this film. I really appreciate it, and the next non-Bond movie review on this channel will be The Rock. And if you would like to vote in future polls deciding what movies I review on this channel, then please do head over to my Patreon page for more details. There are links below, as well as links to my Facebook page and my Twitter page. And also, please leave me a comment in the comment section below if you've seen Gold and have any thoughts and opinions on it. Was I too harsh on the middle section of the movie, and should I be really giving it another chance? Please do let me know in the comment section below. And all that being said, until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.